10-day silent retreat. And that after that retreat, he said his mind was like a beam. He could focus it over here, and then he could move it over there, and all the crosstalk was gone, all the chatter was gone. And I thought, wow, I really want a mind like a beam. So I went there too. And when I got to the monastery, they said, welcome. You're here because you're in pain. And I said, no, no I'm not here. I, I, I'm here because I want a mind like a beam. And they said, no, pain. And I said, beam. And I said, it's back and forth like that beam, pain, pain, beam. And I was like, and I said, this is just a really very bad way to start, you know, with like a, an argument. Now, the form of Buddhism that they were doing is called Vipassana. And it's a relatively new form from Thailand, which is about 500 years old. And Vipassana is based on pain and how to store it. So for example, when something bad happens to you and you don't immediately scream, you just put it somewhere and it stays there and you have to find it. Now with psychoanalysis, you try to recover painful experiences through language and talking. This just never worked for me. I could always tell a story about it or some self-conscious joke, and, but with the body, you really can't exaggerate or tell jokes or you know, you just can't ignore it. So as I started to do the meditation, I realized that it was totally about pain. This was like a really hardcore practice thing. You meditate for 18 hours a day. You know, each day you get up at four in total silence, you meditate and then for two hours you walk and then you meditate again and then you have the only meal of the day. And then more meditation, singing, walking and so on. And the only sound were gongs that marked the session. And as you sat there, lots of things happened, very painful things. So your legs are crossed and, you know, after three hours, it feels like your left leg has been sawed off and, you know, the right shoulder blade has been removed and pulverized and stuck back on. And as you feel this pain, you gradually realize that it's connected to your emotions, to things from the past, to pain. And you finally get the point. And the way this pain is stored is so elegant. Loss and sadness you feel in your heart, and anger in your jaw, and fury in your liver, and so on. You're like a library of pain, all well documented and coded and filed away. Then you start noticing as it's happening, you get angry and you feel it just getting routed right there. So when you get angry, it goes directly to your jaw and your jaw tightens into a grimace that you just start to wear. So the idea is to train yourself to use energy to move this out and ideally it's kundalini or spinal energy and I only felt that once. It was so terrifying. This lightning rips up your spine and there's a blinding white light. It's like you've had eyes, but you've never opened them. And I've been waiting for the rest of my life since then for this to strike again. So I'm just on my own in the pain department. But anyway, when we left the monastery, the teacher said, okay, now you've been meditating for 18 hours a day and you'll go home and, you know, routine will take over and some of you will just won't start, you know, uh, you'll just start meditating 12 hours a day. Some of you will only do 10, and some of you will only really do one, or no, no we're going to do 18. And, and uh, anyway, we were speechless, but we could kind of see how that could happen. Then they said, but you won't forget. And next time, you'll start again, and you'll get a little farther, and then you'll forget again. And so on like that. And that's when I was thought, I'm in. Because I thought, finally, something that really understands how humans really do things. We do things, and we just forget. We forget how to do them. And then we do them again, and then we just forget them again. And as a kid, I had been taught this kind of belief system that said, basically, if you make a choice and you backslide, you're really going to be punished. It'll be worse for you than if you never promised to do anything 
แล้วเดี๋ยว